let me start with introductions. My name is Omar. I'll be your host leading us through events and volunteer training, and I'm co-hosted by Michael. We'll be taking care of your questions in the Q&A box in Zoom. You'll see your little Q&A box button at the bottom of Zoom, and you can click that box and submit a question to us. And over the course of the webinar, Michael will be taking care of your questions near the end of the webinar, about 10 minutes before it ends. Uh, Michael and I will be doing a little swap. He'll answer any questions that we've received live with the, with the screen, and then I'll be taking over Q&A. So just keep in mind over the course of the full webinar, if you have any questions, submit them to us using the Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom uh, bar of your Zoom meeting bar, and uh, we'll make sure to get them and answer your questions as we go through. Okay, so I've started with introductions. Let me go over what topics we'll be covering for our webinar here. So just to give you that list of topics, we'll be going through the whole process of creating an event planner event on the club website. We'll be setting up the registration options to allow it to be public or member only um, while we create the event. We'll also be uh, setting the payment options and price for the event, uh, the registration price for the event. Uh, after we've got all of that groundwork set for the event, we'll be moving on to sending invitations and emails to interested parties and attendees for the event. And once we have some attendees that I'll go ahead and enter in for our event, we'll review the registration and payment reports to make sure uh, all that information is being stored in the event module. And after we have a operating event, we'll create a brief signup list and I'll move on to um, showing you how you can use the link editor tool to link the event and signup list in emails sent from your communication module, time willing, uh, with the Q&A session. So without, uh, without any further delay, let me go ahead and pull up the club website here. Sorry, Omar, to kind of interrupt you. Yeah. Um, before we go ahead and get started, I did want to mention to everyone, I already see a couple a couple questions coming in about this. Um, this webinar is being recorded and everything will be posted to our clubrunnercommunity.com website as well as our clubrunnersupport.com website. Uh, so if any of you need to, uh, for any reason, need to uh, need to jump ship uh, during in the middle of the webinar and you don't want to miss anything out, feel free to keep checking back uh, within a, the next week or so uh, to our clubrunnercommunity.com website as Omar has up already. Yeah, uh, we'll be posting everything there. Yeah, and you'll and if you pulled up clubrunnercommunity.com on your browsers, you'll find the videos once they're uploaded in the general group here. And I'm going to go ahead and just click it so you can see them. We've already started uploading some of the videos, so just again, clubrunnercommunity.com, and then in the general section, you'll see the changeover training recording links. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you, Michael. Thank you no for problem. interrupting me and sharing that note. No. So let's go go on back to the club website. So I'm going to pull that up here. I've actually already gone ahead and logged into the club website. And to do that, in the top right, you'll see a member login link. And once you click that, you'll be taken to your member login form where I've entered my user's login name and password and then click login. And now we're kicked back to the home page. To enter the member area, I'm going to click the member area link in the top right of the home page here. Okay, and that'll load up our club's member area. To access the events for your club website and database, you can access them by clicking the events module up here in the top blue bar. And then just below this events module, we're gonna work in the event planner event list. I do wanna mention, we do have another style of event, the my event runner type of events. Um, these Those events can include a, a, a main registration package and multiple add-ons for the registrants to choose from where the event planner event uh, we are creating will only have the single registration pricing. So just keep that in mind. If you're looking to have additional options for your registrants uh, to purchase add-ons or any extras, you may wanna create it as a My Event Runner event as opposed to an event planner event. And just to keep you guys posted on that, if you want some more specific event planner event training, I, I'm gonna pull up the clubrunner.com forward slash training page. I'm just gonna type that in again, clubrunner dot com forward slash training and if you would like training on the my event sorry my event runner system which can have multiple add-ons and packages our session on that pardon me it's coming up in one of these deep dive series here we are on july 21st uh you can you can dive into the my event runner event creation system to create multiple add-ons uh main packages for your registrants where 
what we're doing today is the event planner event, which can have a single registration pricing. So I, I got that out of the way. Just keep in mind that we do have those two different type of events in the events module. So I brought us back into the club member area here in the events module, we're working in event planner. And then you can also create events in my event runner. And there is a separate webinar for the my event runner events. It's a, a bit more extensive than what we're covering. So let's go ahead and just create an event in event planner. I'm just going to go ahead and click event planner in the gray bar just below. And that'll pull up our event planner event list for our for our demonstration account here. Here we already have two events. We've got an August 20th barbecue and a club barbecue on, uh, on October 31st. If you'd like to create a new event, just brand new in the top right of the page, we can click this orange, create a new event button. I'm gonna go ahead and just do that. And that'll pull up your create new event page. Here you can title the event name and I'm gonna do another barbecue, pardon me. I'm gonna go ahead and title this the July 30th club fundraiser barbecue. So we've got our event name for the event. Just below that, we have the event code. This code is used if your club has an online payment account uh, and a member or, or visitor registers for the event, this event code will appear in the online payment processing number. So just keep that in mind. If you have an online payment account uh, with your club's club runner website, for example, uh, Bambora for our clubs in Canada and uh, Paya, previously known as Sage for our clubs in America, this event code tags those payments to the online payment account. So that's the event code. Uh, I don't have a, a, a an operating online payment account to review and cross-reference. So I'm gonna leave that field blank. And I guess I wanna mention while I'm here, if you see any fields in orange, those fields are required where any fields in gray, um, you do not necessarily have to set to create the event. So we're gonna skip event code. Next, just below, we have the status of the event. We're gonna create it as an active event. But if you have some more changes you'd like to make to the event before making it active, you can just publish it in this draft status and then make more changes. And once you're ready, return to this event details page and then activate the event. So I'm gonna set it as active just so we have it as active to start with. Below that, you have the event type dropdown where you can choose how the event is color coded to your events calendar, or sorry, your club's club website calendar. Let me show you what, what I mean here. We're going to choose fundraiser for the event type, but to get a visual on these event types, I'm going to pull up the home page in a new tab right here. And then on this home page, our demonstration account home page, I'm going to pull up the calendar. Okay, and once I pull up the calendar, we had selected fundraiser for our event. So we're expecting the event to appear with this light blue color, but you can also select the other event type, say club meeting to have it appear with this color and sort of color code your event planner events on the club calendar. Okay, so if you find that your club doesn't have this calendar option in your navigation menu, you can reach out to us at support at clubrunner.ca over email and we can assist with helping you build the navigation menu to include this calendar's built-in page. Or you can also pull up the clubrunnersupport.com website and then in the top right, click this blue contact us button and you can send us an email where we can further assist you with building your club's navigation menu. Okay, I've talked enough about the event type and how it appears on the, cal the built-in calendar page and how you can get that in there. Uh, let's go back to the create new event page. We've set the event type. Next, let's set the event dates. So I've set the event start date to be July 30th. That's the day the event is taking place. So let's go ahead and set the start date and time to July 30th. And then to do that, I've used this little calendar icon and then select July 30th. And I can, I can use this little calendar pop-up to navigate to more months using these uh, forward and back arrows, or uh, you can click the month and that'll pull up the months where you can just select the month and then choose the day from that month. You can also type it in, but it must match this format. So it's probably easier just to use this mini calendar icon and then set the date. You can also set a time, a specific start and end time for the event by using the field just to the right of it. To use this field, you can use these these uh, uh, cardinal arrows to set the time. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the up arrow and it'll plop in 3 p.m., 3.09 p.m. for me. I'm, I like it at three. Let's go ahead and change this minute field. I'm just gonna click minutes and that'll highlight the field. And I'm gonna use this down arrow to change it to three o'clock flat. 
Okay, so that's our start time at 3 at 3 p.m. on July 30th. It's going to start. Let's set the end time to 6 p.m. And to do that, I'm actually just going to type it in in this case. I'm going to type in 06, and it's already filled in 6 p.m. for me. And then I've tabbed into the minute field. I'm going to type in 00, and p.m. is good. So this event's about three hours, uh, July 30th. We've got our times in. Next, let's move on to the description field. So this description will appear on the events registration page as a little text box where you can include uh, information about the event. So I'm going to go ahead and just type in uh, event registration, be $20, uh, registration tickets include a burger and, and a soda beverage. Okay, and I'm going to leave my description as that. You can enter as much detail as you'd like about the event, such as who's attending, um, if there's any important guests, uh, prices like I have, or any other uh, details you'd like about the event. You can throw those in your description, and they will appear on the event planner event registration page. Okay, we've got a description in. Let's move on now. We've got this option to enable the registration right now. I'm going to leave it as no. I'd like to set the prices for the registration first before I go ahead and enable the event. So just uh, keep that in mind. If you'd like to just publish and enable the event right away, you can choose yes here, but it is defaulted to no so that you can review your payment and registration options before publishing and, and enabling the registration for the event. So we're going to leave this as no. Moving on, we have an image we can include for a thumbnail for the event. To, to set a thumbnail, I'm going to click this choose file line. So I'm going to go ahead and click this button, and that'll pull up the folder, the folder explorer, pardon me, on my device where I've pulled up my demonstration folder here. And here I have three barbecue images. I'm going to choose this corn on the cob bar uh, barbecue image. And to do that, I'm just going to double click it and it will add the image file to the image for the event. So that's set. Moving on, we're going to set the event chair. By default, it is set to the account that I'm already logged into here. So I'm logged into Charles Hampton, and he has the email address omar at sendgrid.example.net. You can set up a new event chair just by clicking this event chair dropdown and then choosing the member from the club to be the new event chair. So I'm just going to show it as an example here. I'm going to choose Ni Quang. And that'll automatically fill in Nee's email address as well as phone number information. Um, and, and that's how you can set your event chair. OK, I'm going to return it to Charles Hampton. There we are, my demonstration account. Below the event chair email and phone information, you can include the location information for the event. And I want to mention, if you have a full and complete uh, uh, address for your event planner event, you will find that it appears on um, in, a, in a Google map on the event registration page. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to use the Club Runner office address as, um, as our uh, address for the event. So bear with me here as I just throw in some details. Here. So I've set the location. It's just the location and address line one are just going to be the same. Uh, the location can tend to just be a name. So you can throw in the name of the place, but the address line one is the actual address of the place. So I've thrown in the address information. Uh, one other uh, uh, um, mention I'd like to make is this latitude and longitude field. If you know these values or have already uh, pulled them from Google Maps, you can enter these latitude and longitude values for your event. And that'll also help the system with placing where the event is on that map preview for the event. So I've got the information in there to display that map. And once I show you guys the event registration page on the public website, we can use it to uh, review the map details and register a member, provided we have the uh, uh, register member details on. So let's, let's carry on. We've got the address information in. Finally, we have some of these show options. I'm just going to quickly go through them. We can show the event in the event homepage. So if your club is using the upcoming events widget, it'll appear on that widget. Let me show you what I mean. In that same tab, I pulled up the calendar. I'm going to go back to the homepage. And if your club has this club events widget, that's where this show in events uh, uh, events, sorry, show on homepage uh, show setting is is affecting here. It's it's, it's going to display it in this club events uh, uh, events widget. So that's the show event in homepage. Next, we have the show event in calendar setting, and this setting is again back in that same 
uh, events and calendar built-in page. So if we have the event to show event in calendar, it'll appear on your club's built-in calendar page. And I've done that for our uh, for my previous demonstration event planner event here, post brief barbecue, August 20th. So, so we will go ahead and publish that to the calendar and we will also review here to make sure that it appears on July 30th once we have the event saved. Okay, so that's the show event in calendar. Next is the show in events list. So the events list is part of your club's calendar page. If I go back to that built-in calendar page, I can click this list view to view the upcoming events at the club in a list format. And that's what that show in events list is controlling is, is if the event should be listed here in this events list page. Okay, look, returning to the event, we also have the show event in bulletin option. And this works basically the same as that club events widget I showed on the home page. If your bulletin has that upcoming events widget, it'll post this event into that upcoming events widget for the bulletins, similar to the show event in home page and how the event appears in the uh, club events widget on the homepage. The same widget that we have for the homepage, there's one similar to the bulletins. Okay, let's move on from these show options. Below that, we have a display social media share bar option. And this social media share bar will appear just below the event planner event where any visitor or member can click the Facebook, uh, Pinterest, LinkedIn icon to share the event on their page on that social media platform. Okay, that's the display social media share bar. You also have this show event in district calendar. So if your club account is entered into your district club runner account, you can opt, pardon me, you can opt to show the event on the district calendar in addition to your club calendar. And finally, we have this show map option, which is what I was referring to with these address details. So long as these address details are, in, are complete and include a postal code, you can use this show map checkbox to show a Google map using this address information on the event page to show registrants where the event is occurring. Okay, we've set our event details, we've got the address in, we've set a, a description, we've even thrown in an image file um, and our dates, it's all set. Let's go ahead and save the event and to do that, I'm going to go ahead and scroll all the way to the bottom of this create event page and click this orange save button. Okay, and that'll save the event to the club website. So we've saved it. We've even got our uh, our barbecue image here. Uh, next, let's move on to enabling the registration and choosing how we'd like to uh, get members to register. So right after we save the event, all of our event details will be sh will be saved in the event details slash edit details page. Let me quickly show you that. I'm going to click edit details here. And that'll pull up the same page where we had set all of this information for the event. So I'm going to go ahead and go back and uh, uh, moving on. I, I guess I should mention this, though. You can actually include links and download files for your event by using these two blue buttons just to the right of the event. Let me show you how these work. Let's say we'd like to include a search engine, google.com, as a link for our event. We can click this blue edit links button. And that'll open up a page to include event links on the event registration page. To add a link, I'm going to click this orange add link button. And I'm going to have it appear with Google, Google our event with an exclamation mark. And then set it to direct users to google.com. Oops. So that's one link we're going to have available for the event. You can add other links. Say if you're if you have more event details on another website, you can you can use that uh, edit links for your event to include that link. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this for now. Let's get one download file in, and then we'll move on to the registration. And to do a download file, I'm going to click this Edit Download Files button right on the right side of the page here. A, a similar page will open where instead of event links, we see event download files. And to add a download file, I'm going to use an or the orange Add Download File button. Uh, up at the top, I do want to mention, it mentions that these download files are, are always public and that once a visitor goes to your website, they will be able to uh, view and download the information. So just keep that in mind, download files uploaded to the club website and events are always public. So just keep that in mind. If you're looking to upload private documents, we suggest uploading them into your organization module documents tab where you can set an access level to require a login. But for events, it's always public. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to throw in an image as one of our download files. And to do that, I've clicked this orange add download file button. It'll, it'll ask me to title 
the download file, I'm just going to title it barbecue image. And then just after entering the title, I'm going to click this choose file button to open up the file explorer on my device and then choose the image. I'm just going to choose that same barbecue corn image. Okay, so we've got our uh, download file and link. Let's go ahead and save them by clicking that uh, save link and that and that has saved the download file to the event. So let's return to the ev main event page by clicking this back to event services link right here in the top left and that'll take us to the event. So we've done all of the details, links and download files. Let's move on to editing the registration options. So just below, we've got this registration section to further edit the registration section. I'm gonna click this edit reg registration options link. Okay, and that's pulled up the options for our event by uh, by default. Once you open up the event registration options, the page will prompt you to open the event for registration, basically setting it to active and allowing people to register right here. If you'd like to keep the event closed, uncheck this checkbox and then you can make further edits. But I'd like to publish it after we get our registration options in. So let's uh, keep this checked and carry on. Uh, so just below that, we have the date range for which we're accepting registrations for the event. By default, the system will automatically uh, begin the start date for today's date, uh, July 19th, and it's set it to uh, midnight, and then it'll end the registration the time the event begins. So we set the event to begin on July 30th at 3 p.m., and that's how the system has calculated this end time for July 30th at 3 p.m. Okay, um, so we've, we've set our event end and start registration dates. Uh, moving on, it's asking us, is there a fee to attend this event? Yes, we've set it as $20. However, uh, uh, we, we, we are not able to set the price here. We can do that from the payment options just below the registration option. So we will get to that. For now, uh, this, this field is just confirming for us that it is free. Below this, uh, is, the, is there an, a fee to attend the event field? We have the allow public registration, which would allow visitors in addition to your members to register for the event. I'm gonna set it to yes, to allow guests to the website to register. Below that, we have the allow members to register their guests. So if a member is registering using the website, they can include uh, an additional guest on their, on their registration, multiple guests, and register all of them for the event price uh, and have them all attend. So, so that's the allow med members to register guests. Finally, we have some copy event chair on new registration emails option. It's, it, it does exactly what it says. For the event chair we've set, Charles Hampton, he will receive an email uh, every time a registration comes in, so long as this uh, checkbox is checked. And we're going to go ahead and set that. And finally, you have this enable comments on registration page, which would allow any member to log into the club website, open up that event planner event registration page, and type in a comment. Uh, by default, the system will set this uh, enable comments option to off to not allow guests to or members pardon me to write comments about your event if you're interested in collecting feedback for the event or any thoughts from the members uh, you may want to actually turn this uh, comment on but be beware that any member would be able to post their feelings and thoughts about the event to the event registration page so use it in your best interest uh, by default the system leaves it off so um, you don't have to worry about managing any member comments you can just leave it off and collect your registrations and have the page be the registration page Okay, so those, those are the settings. I'm gonna, again, turn this back off, this enable comments. Everything else I'd like, I would like the public registration. I want to have members be able to register guests and I want the event share to be copied on uh, registration emails. Let's go ahead and save our registration settings. Okay, so we've set our registration. It's asking us, uh, sorry, it's not asking us, but it's providing us with the options for some reports as well as uh, register options for members. We can opt to register a member ourselves as well as review those registered members. We'll return back to this register and report section. First, I wanna to get to the payment settings because we haven't set our payment price of $20. So just scrolling down the event some more, I'm skipping past volunteers. We will come back to volunteers. In the payment settings, I'm gonna click this blue change payment settings option to set our payment. 
As soon as I click that, it asks us if we want our event fee. Yep, we set this to $20 from our description, so we're going to keep it as $20. And just below the event fee, we can choose a currency. We are located in uh, Canada, so I'm going to choose Canadian dollar. There we are. But we also have many other currencies you can select from, including the US dollar all the way uh, just near the bottom here. But again, I'm just going to keep it as Canadian dollar. So that's our currency. Below that, you have a payment method. If your club, uh, club's Club Runner website has an online payment account connected to it to accept event registration fees, as well as donations received through your club's donations module. Let me show you where the donations module is. It's right here in this top blue bar. You'll see donations beta. So if your club has an online payment account, you can use this donations beta module to set up your donation page. And then with the Sage or Paya account, collect those donations to the club website. Uh, I guess I'll take a little break from setting the payment here to show you where you can find our online payment account information. Uh, so pulling up a new browser tab, I'm going to go to clubrunner.ca, and that'll take us to the Clubrunner official uh, website. And to view the options for the online payment account feature, I'm going to click Features. And once you're on the Features page, you can scroll down to Online Payment. And depending on where your club is located, you would be able to sign up with a different preferred payment provider. So for our clubs in Canada, if I click Canada, you would have the option to sign up for a online payment account with Bambora and Bambora would process those event registrations, donations and invoices sent from the dues and billing module uh, using your club website with integrated reporting. So just keep that in mind. Uh, if you're interested in learning about uh, more about an online payment account, uh, clubrunner.ca and then you go to features, online payments, and then you can review for the country that you guys are in to sign up for that account if you're interested in collecting um, uh, online payments for event registration, donations, and um, uh, pardon me, and membership invoices from the dues and billing module. Okay, uh, let's carry on by returning to the event payment page here. I'm going to set our payment provider to the Bambora test payment account. Again, it's a test payment account. So I, uh, the data itself, I wouldn't be able to show you, but I will go through the registration and payment reports so we can review the club runner side of reporting. Okay, so we've set our payment method. Next, we have the option to require members to pay to complete their registration. Let's keep this as no. Basically, it's asking us if the members uh, would like to register and if you're okay with having them pay at a later time. So I'm going to leave it as no, we will let them register without taking a payment initially. And then finally, we have the do you wish to allow uh, payment by check. In this case, it's set to no, I'm going to set it to yes, just in a, because we're also allowing them to complete the registration without paying. And once you allow the payment by check, you can include some instructions on how you'd like those checks to be written out. I'm just going to say, uh, please make check payable to Club Runner demonstration account. Just for some example text, you can include your club's full name and any other details uh, for those checks. Okay, we've set our payment options. I'm going to go ahead and click this orange save button to save our $20 price, as well as allowing members to not have to pay to register. So we've set our payment settings. If I scroll down to the payment settings, we can see it's all set. Let's return to this registration section. I'm going to go ahead and just get get some members registered into the event. And to do that, I'm clicking the, let me show you again here, this register members link in the register section. So I'm gonna go ahead and click register members and that'll pull up the member list. If you, if while on this page, you would like to include other members from other clubs within your district, you can check this include other members checkbox and that'll include uh, pardon me, I've, I've actually been mistaken. This include other members is your other users. So if you have any members stored as other user records in your database, you can opt to include them by clicking this include other members checkbox. There's a separate option to register uh, members from other clubs within your district. And I will show you that. So we've got our including other users option. Let's go ahead and just register Ford John here. I'm going to do that by clicking the register link and then clicking OK on the browser prompt. It'll tell me that John owes $20 for their uh, event registration. We can just mark them as paid by clicking this blue pay link. And I've done that. So now it'll prompt me to save John's payment here. Uh, 
I'm good with the information. So let's click the orange record payment. You also have some options to specify how they're paying either. Uh, they would like to pay by credit card, in which case you can click this button and process the credit card payment or this pay by check option where you can log the, the check payment. But we're gonna be sated with uh, just clicking that pay link and I'm gonna record it by clicking this orange record payment button. Okay, and it's prompting me to save it with a comment. Let's go ahead and just add a comment payment for John F and then save the payment. Okay, and that's and that's logged John's payment. Let's go ahead, go back, and I'm gonna show you how you can register members of other clubs. Um, and to do that, I'm back on the events, the events main page, and to register a member from another club, I'm gonna click this register members from other clubs link. Okay, and that'll automatically pull up this page to select which club you're registering members from. You, you would use the select club drop down, and all of the clubs within your district would appear here. I'm going to open up our sister demonstration account, Purple Metro. We're currently in Greentown. And once I have that Purple Metro, I'm going to click this blue show club registrations. And nobody from Purple Metro has registered. Let's go ahead and register multiple of them. And to do that, I'm going to check this checkbox to the left of their name and then click the register all selected button just there at the top. And I'm going to click OK on this browser prompt. <clears throat> and same sort of deal. It'll mark them as attending to make payments for the members or log their payments. We can click this blue pay link. And I'm going to leave this as now just to have different data um, for the other members here. So let's, let's say we're good here. Let's go back to the events services page, the main page for the event. You can also register non-members and it would prompt you to enter their uh, additional details. Once I click register non-members, you can click register additional guests and then you can enter their first name, last name, email address information and check this checkbox confirming that the guest has been um, added to the club's database. That's how you can register non-members. I need to carry on here. So I'm gonna go back to the event uh, services page and show you what the payment report looks like after you have some attendees and people who paid for the registration. So I'm going to download the payment report by clicking this download payment report link in the report section. So let's go ahead and just do that. And once I click that download payment report, a file will be downloaded to your browser. It's a spreadsheet file. I'm going to click to open it. And by default, uh, these, these spreadsheet files open in Excel on my device. And here we have it. We, it shows that we've registered John Ford and that we did receive a $20 payment from John. However, the three members we registered from other clubs, we did not log their payments and they're showing up with a balance owing of $20. So just keep that in mind when you're working in that event, you have the option to register members using that right side register section or review the reports about the registered members, non-members and other members by using that download payment report. You can also review uh, the registered attendees list and att attendees in detail, but I, I won't spend more time on that. Definitely check out this report, uh, report section for your event planner events once you have them open. Okay, so that's the event. Effectively, it's all set. I wanna show you guys what it looks like on the club homepage. So we've, we've set our payment options, we've reviewed some reports, we've even registered a member and we've set all of our details. Let me show you with that show event in the homepage as well as show an event calendar, we've created that event on the club homepage. So I pulled up the club homepage here in a new browser tab. If I scroll down to the show in event uh, homepage, we've got the club events widget. And here we have it, the club 30 or July 30th club fundraiser barbecue. This is the event we've just created. I wanna show you another place we post the event to. So here we have it in the club events widget for the homepage. If I go to the top blue bar here and then go to my events and calendar folder and click calendar, we're on the calendar built-in page. And right here, we can see our blue fundraiser style event, July 30th club fundraiser barbecue with the fundraiser coloring here in the legend. And uh, and it's listed here as well. Okay, and let's go ahead and click it here. I've almost forgotten to click the, the event after creating it. So let's click the event. And this is the registration page for the event. Here is our $20 price tag, as well as the event details description that we had entered all the way at the start of our webinar here. If we'd like to register register a member, we can click this members link. Guests can also register. Any visitor can click this guest link to register as a guest. And we've also included some links and download files. We've, we've included that google.com link. I can click this link and in the new browser tab, google.com will open. 
and then that barbecue image where if I click this link, the file will open on my, my browser device, this very image that we've set for the event planner event. Okay, let's let, let me show you what it, what, it, what it looks like to register a member, and then we'll move into volunteer list. And I do have to make sure I leave some time for the Q&A session with Michael here at the end. So another 15 minutes, and we'll go into the Q&A session. So from, uh, from the event registration page, I've clicked members. I am logged in as an administrator, so it's loaded up this, this member area registration page. Um, to register myself, I can click this blue register me button, or I can, uh, I can decline the registration after I've made it, or I can add additional guests to my registration. I'm just going to register Charles Hampton to the event, and to do that, I'm going to click this blue register me button. And it'll prompt me some information for Charles. Um, most of it will be automatically filled for me based on the member's profile. Um, I think I think we're good. Yep. So we've got all the information there. I'm going to confirm the registration. And once we've confirmed the registration, we can proceed with the payment using this proceed payment button at the bottom right of the page. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just quickly save Charles's payment to the event. Uh, it's brought me here where, again, I have those options on choosing to pay by credit card, by check, or just recording the payment using the system. I'm just going to go ahead and use this record payment button. And we're going to say he's paid by cash instead with this payment type dropdown and say uh, Charles has paid <clears throat> for the event. And then save Charles's registration for the event. So that's how you can use this members registration button. Let me quickly show you what it looks like for a guest. Um, and to do that, I'm just going to click this guest link. And as soon as I click that guest option, uh, this guest form will appear where the guests can enter their first name, last name, and any other information, and then save their registration. I, I don't want to spend too much more time on this because I need to move into setting an, a volunteer list for your event. So just be aware if you set the allow guests to register, um, this this guest button, I'm just going to go back, this guest button right here will be available for guests to register for the event. And I, actually, I didn't get to highlight this, but with that view map sh show option, as well as entering the address information, Google Maps has created this map location for our event. So make sure your address details are entered, including a, um, including a postal code, and you will also have this uh, uh, Google Map to preview your events and any other visitors who preview your event. So let's go back into the event uh, member area. We're going to create a volunteer sign-up list, which will appear in addition to these online registration options. So I'm just going to do it the old-fashioned way. I'm not going to switch all the way back into this tab. Let's get to the member area from here. I'm going to click member area up here in the top right. Back in the administration page, I'm going to open up the events module from this top blue bar and then click event planner in the gray bar just below. Okay, so this is our events list. Here we see the event we've just created together. To open up this event and assign a volunteer signup list to it, we can click the event name and that'll pull up the events page. And we've set all this stuff. We're here for the volunteers uh, section. I'm gonna go ahead and click this create signup list button um, for, the, for the event. And this will create a signup list for this July 30th barbecue event. So here we are. I've, I'm in the process of creating signup lists. I'm going to go ahead and create volunteers for July 30th BBQ. And I want to mention this name for the signup list will appear directly on the event planner event page. So once, once I've saved this page, this signup list part of me, we, we will expect that this volunteers for July 30th barbecue button appears on the event planner page, that page I just showed you from the public website. So I'll show you guys that once we have it saved. Let's carry on. For the start date, we need it to happen before July 30th. I'm going to sort of follow suit with the uh, registration times. I'm also going to throw this in as 3 p.m. So just before the event starts, this volunteer list is available for signups. Uh, below that, we have the option to allow this signup list to be to be public, which would allow visitors to register for the signup list. I want to mention uh, this demonstration account I am using is using the enhanced volunteers module, which allows me to create public signup lists. If your club does not have the enhanced volunteer module, this option will be set to no with no option to change it. It'll only be for members. And then you would also uh, be forced to link the signup list to an event. And right now it's set to yes, so I can have this uh, this sign up. Pardon me, I said I said it'd be set to no, but in this case it'd be set to yes. So it it will force to uh, assign the list to an event. But with 
the enhanced volunteer list, you can choose to make it a standalone list. So I'm using that enhancement. So I'm allowed to make it a standalone, but I want to link it to the event that we've created. So I'm going to keep it as yes. And then just below linking it to an event, it'll tell me which event I want to link it to. And this is the perfect event, the July 30th club fundraiser barbecue. We can click it and choose the other fundraisers, but uh, this sign up list is for this July 30th club fundraiser barbecue. So we've set which event the volunteer sign up list is assigned to. We also have a sign up list chair. I'm going to keep it as Charles for, uh, for uh, sanity's purpose. He's the event chair. Now he's also the sign up list chair. And let's copy him on the sign up list uh, confirmation. So I'm going to choose yes. That's the general settings for the sign up list. Below that, we have some tasks and shifts and groups that you can set for the volunteer sign up list. And it breaks down as so. First, you have your, your group, and then you have a number of tasks in the group. And for each task, you can have a, a person sign up for the task. So let me quickly show you what that means. Uh, let's just have these default groups be group, uh, group. But for the number of groups, I'm going to have a morning and a night group. So I'm going to have two groups. And then for each group, I want to have four tasks. Say we need somebody on the barbecue, somebody to man registrations and processing, and another two for uh, tote bags, for example. So we're going to say we have four different tasks in each of these morning and night two groups. And then for uh, for each of these tasks, we only need one, uh, one person. But actually, for example's sake, let's have two people be required to be the greeter or um, the processor or the tote bag. In, in the tote bag case, it'd be four people, but you can decide how you'd like to sort of split that up. Basically it's groups, how many groups of volunteers you'd like, then the tasks within those groups and how many people per task. And that's sort of how it breaks down in a nutshell. So we've got our sort of breakdown. I'll show you more how it looks like once we get into it. Finally, we have this, do the tasks have a start date or time? You can opt to have the tasks within the groups uh, incremented by a time or day. Let, let me show you what that means. Let's go ahead and click yes here. Automatically, it'll choose the start date of the sign up list for when the tasks begin. We want them to begin on July 30th, the date that uh, the event is taking place. And then for the start time, everything will begin at 3 p.m., the time the event begins. And for an end time, I'm going to leave it empty. I'm going to have the system take care of the end time for me. So I've set a start date and start time. How would we like to increment the tasks? I'm going to choose a time because it's a single date event, but you can choose date to make it a multi-day volunteer signup list for your multi-day event if you have, if you have that sort of multi-day event in mind. So let's choose time. And as soon as I choose time, we'll have these time options. If you chose date, you'll have some day options, but I'm going to stick with time. Let's set this to one hour and 30 minutes. So for every, for every four tasks within the group, they will be broken up by an hour and a half. So we're done with saving the signup list. Let's go ahead and create the signup list. And I've done that by clicking the orange create signup list button in the bottom right of the signup list. And that'll take us to the manage tasks for volunteers signup list. Uh, page. And let me show you how you can navigate back to this page without using the event volunteer method that we had used. So if you're in your club administration area, in the top blue bar, we can click volunteers and then view signup lists in the gray bar below. And that'll pull up all of the active signup lists for your club website. Here, I have the volunteers for July 30th barbecue signup list. And to open and review the signups for the list, I can just click the volunteer signup list name, and that'll pull up the uh, the the list itself, and I think I've made a, a little bit. This made this a little bit more confusing by naming my uh, shifts as groups. So let's fix that from this manage task page. I'm going to edit just some of the names of the groups, these primary groups, and then uh, and then the actual groups here. So let me let me make this a little more easier to read. And to do that, I'm going to click this blue edit link on the right side of the page, and we're going to call this morning group, and save that. And then for group two, we're going to edit it to be the, the night group, just like the, the, I guess I should say evening group. That's probably more fitting, evening group. Okay, and there we have it. We have our morning group and evening group. And then for each of the, the subgroups within these groups, we can click the group name and that'll show us the 
two people per task within, within the group. So we had, uh, just to reiterate, we had those two primary groups and then four tasks within each group and then two sign-up lists or two signups for each task. And that's what we're looking at here. We've got our two primary groups, the morning group and the evening group. And then we have the four tasks aptly titled group, pardon me, um, that you can, that, that collect the two people, two volunteers for each. And to sign up somebody, if, uh, if you were signed in as a club administrator, you can just click that group, like I'll show you from here. So from the uh, events, or sorry, from the volunteer signup page, I can click the group. It'll bring up this list of all of the groups within my tasks, and then, uh, and then click this orange sign up button to sign up a member of my club using this member type. And then I can just select the member or not a member and then type in their information or just choose yourself and it'll plop in your own information. Let's go ahead and save myself. I believe I've selected uh, group two. So there we are. Charles Hampton is one of two in group two, the morning group. And let's go ahead and throw in another member. I'm just gonna choose one at random here, um, John Ford and save that. And just to show you that you can further change the names of these groups. So we filled out the second group for the morning group, but you can still change these names of these uh, tasks. Um, and to do that, I've, I've come back to the uh, main signup page for the signup for the signup list and using the same edit link like we did for the morning and evening group, I'm going to click it for these uh, poorly named, poorly titled tasks. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this task here and call it greeter and save that. And let me just make this, this first group with its four tasks more, more clear, because I think I've caused some confusion here. So we've got our greeter, we've got tote handouts, one. I said we're going to have two of those, and then we're just going to edit this one to be tote handouts, two. And finally, we also said we'd like somebody to do the actual processing for the attendee. So um, attendee processing, just for just for example sake. And honestly, if I was doing this, um, I'd probably nix the start and end time and just leave a morning group with the tote handouts one and two groups, greeter group and attendee processing group, and then have the second evening group be the same sort of form format. So I've done that all for our morning group here. We've got individual task names, the tote handouts, the greeters, the tote handouts too, and attendee processing. Okay, so we've mostly finished with our uh, sign up list here. I've already taken care of even signing up two members. Let me show you what this looks like from the event events registration page. And to do that, I'm gonna open up the home in a new tab. So we're brought back to the home page, and I'm gonna go through the event calendar to open up the event. And to do that, events and calendar, calendar. And here we are on the calendar. I'm gonna click the July 30th uh, fundraiser barbecue event. And here we have it. We have our new third button, volunteers for July 30th barbecue. And this is the title of the sign up list. So if I click this, I am logged in as Charles. So it'll pull up the member area version of the sign up list where I can uh, sign up more members from our sign up list. But a guest, uh, uh, if, if that allow public registration option is set for the volunteer sign up list using the enhanced volunteer module, a guest would also be able to sign up for the volunteer sign up list. Okay, we're almost we're almost done. I want to show you two more things: uh, how you can email your volunteers and how you can email your event attendees and and uh, invite event uh, invite attendees to the event. So for your volunteer signup list, I'm going to go ahead and just pull up the volunteer signup list again by clicking the volunteers module and then view signup list to view our signup list here. And then I'm going to click the signup list we've created: volunteers for July 30th barbecue. Here. On the right side of the page, you'll have a few groups. We're looking for this emails group. So I can invite people to sign up by clicking this invite people to sign up link. And once I have that page open, we can compose an email to send to invite uh, invite members in this case to come to the uh, come and sign up for the volunteer sign up list. I want to mention once you click that uh, new invitation or invite people to sign up, you will be using the email template for uh, the volunteer invitation. So th that's where all of this information is coming from. Any of the fields that you're seeing in between the dollar signs here means it's a merge field. So this volunteer signup list is actually the name of our volunteer signup list. So it'll automatically fill that in. Similar for 
the nickname and first name we see here, it'll use the contacts first name and last or nickname and last name in this case to send that email out. So, and you can add more merge fields by using this merge field uh, uh, section of the email. And to do that, you would place your cursor where you'd like the merge field to be entered. And then say you'd like the, the sender yourself information to appear. You can choose the sender first name, nickname, last name. I'm just gonna click last name. And as soon as I do that, it'll automatically plop in the sender last name in as a merge field in the email. I'm gonna remove that, but just be aware, this invitation, inf this invitation email template is being pulled from your volunteer signup list email templates just here under the email section. Okay, so I'm gonna leave all of this email as default and I sort of need to hurry along here. So I'm gonna leave everything else as default. I'm gonna send it, um, right now, I need to I need to select some recipients for the message here. So to do that in step one, I'm just going to check the active and honoraries group, and that'll check all these subgroups. We can even uncheck a individual by clicking this expand link and removing, say, Judith. We're just going to do that and send off this email because I want to move along into the event registrations and hopefully show you these email templates too. So. We've sent, yep, we've sent the email. It is queued for sending. We can return to this page to review its statistics at another point. Right now, I just want to show you the email template. So let's go ahead and click email templates in the left-hand link here. Here we see there are a few templates. Um, the one we're looking for, as a matter of fact, these are all system templates. So these are all handled by the system. Um, these are sign-up confirmations for a member, a non-member. You can view them by clicking this preview link. But if you'd like to create your own and use your own, you can copy an existing one or just create a new one. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new one that's very small, um, small volunteer email template, just to have something here. And uh, that's the name of the template. Let's have its subject be um, shorter uh, 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 volunteer email confirmation, short version just to have our own email template that we can use for a uh, volunteer invitation. So I've got the name and subject, the name of the template, the subject that the email will appear with. And here we can go, hello. And I'm just gonna go in for the uh, recipient, first name, space, pardon me, there we are, we've added a space and then last name, there we are, last name. And then I can go on and so on and so forth dot, 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 you can include more information. And then at the very end, you can include the account full name, which is the club account um, name. And, and I've selected it, but you can also try to click this add button to just add the merge field into the, uh, into the, into the email template. I'm, I'm not gonna spend more time. Let's go ahead and save this email template. It's saved, it's titled right here, small volunteer email template. If we'd like to select it for a volunteer invitation, I'm gonna open up a volunteer list view sign up list and then open up the sign up list and here we're going to go to the email section send uh, invite people to sign up and once we create our new uh, message we can select our custom template from these template and merge fields here so i'm going to choose select template custom and then once i select that you'll have a second drop down where you can choose which custom email template you'd like to send to the volunteers okay and i've and i've selected the small volunteer email template it's still showing the default email template you can click insert to replace the content in the email so it's i've clicked insert it's prompting me it'll replace the content okay and that's all i've written for our uh, example template. So it'll automatically plop that information in there. And to do that, I use the email templates page. So I, I've got about another three more minutes and I still want to show one more thing plus a, plus a little feature I want to show you guys. So we've done the volunteer emails and email templates. Similarly, you can make it an event planner event email invitation and uh, event planner email template. So I'm going to go back to our event, July 30th club fundraiser barbecue. I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom Right here at the bottom, we have this email section. You can click new invitation. And again, the system will pull up a default email, a system email template for the event where you honestly don't need to make much, much changes. Uh, really, you would want to make sure you're selecting the buy status group for the invitation. It does some uh, fancier functionality where it will tell you if somebody hasn't been invited yet or has not replied to the invitation, such as these undecided groups. And, uh, and, and that's how you can send out an invitation for the event planner event. So if you open up your event, all the way at the bottom, you'll have that email section, new invitation. And that's how you can pull up this invitation page with its email template. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and send it just so I can show you those 
that those send statistics um, once we have the email sent. And similarly, you can create an email, which isn't an invitation. It wouldn't include those by status group that we had used, but, uh, but you can just send out some email correspondence to, uh, to the in invitees. Um, if you'd like to manage those templates and choose a custom template in the same events module, you can choose event planner email templates, and that'll pull up all of the custom email templates, one we have here, as well as system templates, which are which are created by default by the system. And and by default, the system is using this event planner invitation uh, event email, uh, which is what we just saw when we sent out our event invitation. Okay, I think I've waited good enough here. We can check the email statistics for our event invitation. And to do that, I'm going to go back to the email section for the event planner event, scroll all the way to the bottom. I see it's still queued for sending here. So uh, it should send at some point. And then once it's done, this stats link will have more information for us about the email. So just keep that in mind. You can review the stats for those emails sent for the events module. And uh, finally, I'd like to mention, while you're creating any um, email content or website content, if you have the link editor, to editor tool, you can link both the event planner event and sign up list into an email sent from the club system. So separate from the volunteer email and event email, if we just go to the communication module, email services, and then draft up a quick email, uh, quick event email, we're going to go on questions in just a moment here. I just want to show you this feature. So I'm going to say, uh, click here to sign up for the event. Click here to, to sign up as a volunteer. So I've created this text in a drafted email. If I'd like to get people to click a link in my email to sign up for the event, I've highlighted the click here to sign up for the event, then click this link editor tool, and a new link dialog will appear where you can set the link type to event and then choose which event planner or my event runner event is on your uh, club database and then choose that uh, link to that event registration page. So we can set this event link to the club fundraiser barbecue event. Similarly, we created a volunteer signup list. We can set this link to collect the volunteer signup list. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight that, click here to sign as a volunteer, then click this link editor tool and in the link type dropdown, choose signup list. And that'll again open up a new drop down where we can choose the uh, July 20th barbecue signup list. I think it's it's not here because it is not a public signup list. But if it if you do have that ability to make a public signup list, you would be able to link it through this menu here. Okay, so that's that's all I really wanted to show. In addition to creating the event planner events, sending emails for the event planner events, um, creating a volunteer signup list for the event. Uh, so I hope I hope you guys took away a good chunk of that while I was quickly going through a lot of the features. Um, I will be handing it over to Michael for questions, but quickly before I do, I want to mention you can you can sign up for more Club Runner training by opening up a new browser tab and typing in clubrunner.com forward slash training. Oops, I think I spelled that incorrectly, training. And once you're on our training page, check out the My Event Runner events, uh, events page because that, that can include more pricing options for your attendees to choose multiple pricing. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to share them with us in the Q&A box here. But if you can't get to us now, clubrunnersupport.com, where all of our information on. If, you're, if you have a question, I think the whole create event planner event guide is here. So it'll go through all the steps to create an event planner event. But in the case you can't find it, click the blue contact us button in the top right of the support knowledge base and a form will open where you can email us uh, any questions that you have. So without without further ado, pardon me for the, the delay here. Uh, Michael, if you'd like to answer any questions before we wrap up, I'd, I'd appreciate it. Awesome. Awesome. And I'll be in the Q&A box just below while Michael takes care of your questions. We will be wrapping up by about 4.03, 4.05. So thank you again, Michael, and I'll be in the Q&A box. No problem. Thank you very much, Omar. That, that was all some really great information. I hope everyone in here today was able to take some information from that and is going to be able to take uh, to make use of it within their own Club Runner websites. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and I'm going to steal the screen from you, Omar. Just give me one second. Oops. There we go. So I now have my screen up. And I'm currently logged into our the same website that, that Omar was, the Rotary Club of Greentown. Uh, so this is this is one of our own our own testing websites. So just to make you aware of that. Um, so 
during the webinar, a lot of great questions were asked in the Q and A session. There are still some going, or still some coming in. Uh, Omar is going through there currently and answering out any of the ones that um, that, that may have been missed. Um, if for any reason your your questions weren't answered, uh, feel free to reach out to our Club Runner support team. Uh, you can access this at our support team, our support website. Just give me one second. Things are there. We go. So if you have any questions and we don't get to it today, feel free to go to our clubrunnersupport.com website. And then the top right corner, you can click on contact us. And from here, you'll be able to send in a ticket um, and either come to either myself or one of our other, or, one of, uh, or Omar or one of our other support colleagues, and we'll be able to answer any questions that you have. So I did wanna cover a couple of different things, uh, a couple of different questions that were asked during the webinar, uh, just to make sure that all of this information is out there for you guys. Um, first off, we mentioned this towards the start of the webinar. Um, this, this, the, this webinar has been recorded, uh, and if any of you have missed part of it or you had to jump out at any point, you can feel free to go to our clubrunnercommunity.com website. And from here, you can go to the general tab. And at the very top, you'll find our Train Over Training July 2021 video links. Uh, and this is where we will be posting all of the links to our recorded sessions uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, just so you guys know, we are planning on having uh, each webinar posted here within one to two weeks after the original date. Uh, so if you want to check out this webinar, feel free to check back in one to two weeks, uh, and it should be listed here. Next, another question that I saw a couple times, um, it was based on how about accessing the modules themselves. So if you, if you would like to get in and you would like to start creating events within my event planner uh, or within the volunteer signup list, uh, you will need an access level of 60, which is an editor, uh, to be able to get in and access these tools. Um, if you did have any, um, if you were wondering about what all, the other, all of the different access levels are, again, feel free to go to our clubrunnersupport.com website. And in the search bar, you can search what access levels or what levels access, what access levels are there in Clubrunner. And you'll, it'll be, you'll be brought to a nice article where we'll explain each, every single one of these access levels and what each one will have access to. Uh, I, saw the, I saw another question that came up a few times in regards to the time zone that was used within Event Planner or the volunteer signup lists. Uh, so the, the, these two systems, they will uh, take into consideration your club's local time zone that has been set for the club. Uh, if for any reason you guys are seeing that this doesn't seem to be the case or it's not really at matching up quite nicely, again, feel free to reach out to our support team. We'll be able to take a look uh, and get anything fixed up for you. Uh, uh, next, so those were some of the some of the questions that were they're asked quite a bit. Um, so I, I did want to go over them very uh, very briefly. Um, we do have a couple more questions, uh, so I'm going to see if we can get through those. Uh, we can get through those quickly. Uh, as I can see, we are running out of a little bit of time. So the uh, a big one, and Omar mentioned this uh, very briefly towards the end uh, regarding setting multiple prices uh, for your events. Uh, currently within Event Planner. Uh, only a single price can be set right now. So if we were to enter in the July 30th club fundraiser barbecue event that we have here, and we were to go into our payment settings by clicking on change payment settings, you can see that there's only one area that, an area here in regards to a fee. So you can only set up a single fee for, for an event within event planner. However, if you were, the club does have the online payment module and has access to my event runner, You'll be able to come in here and you can create an event with multiple different packages. And I'm, I'm going to be going through this very quickly just because this isn't, we're not going to be covering my event runner too in depth in this webinar. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at some packages. And you can see here, this is what where you can set up uh, multiple uh, event or sorry, pricings for your event. So say here we have an adult ticket set up. We can also choose to go in and enter in a child ticket. And from here, you can set it, you can set a, a different price. So say that an adult ticket was 20 bucks, you can enter $10 uh, for this child ticket. And now you have now when someone comes to register for this barbecue and made within my event runner, they'll be able to select between these two different options. And again, this is all this is all included within my event runner and the online payment module. If you don't have access to this, uh, unfortunately, you won't be able to, uh, to use that functionality. So let's go back very quickly. Oh, 
There we go. Give me one second. Navigate back. There we go. Uh, I also saw a couple of different questions regarding the event types. Uh, so in, in this case, uh, the, some of you may like want to set an event type for things like recurring calendar items, uh, which we can we will show you very quickly. Uh, these will let you set up recurring items on your club's calendar to appear uh, every so often or how, however often you would like. For example, um, uh, every, every week or every two weeks or every other week and things like that. You can set that all up in here and it'll automatically be inputted into your club's calendar. Currently, these do not support uh, event types at this time. This, the event types are only available within Event Planner and My Event Runner currently. Uh, and this was covered by Omar, but I'm going to very quickly go over how you can go about selecting a club type. So within Event Planner, we're going to go ahead and we're going to select our event. So let's go to July 30th Club Fundraiser Barbecue, click Open. And from here, we can go ahead and click on the Edit Details button. And this will bring us to the page where we can start entering in any of the information about our event. Uh, so we can enter in the event name, the dates and times, all of that information, any descriptions and images, event chairs, all of that stuff. Uh, to select the event type, right underneath the event name and status uh, options, you'll find event type. And from here, you can select between whichever event types that are currently available for the club. Uh, and this will let you change that for uh, your individual events. Now, uh, what if you, what if, and none of these event types really map quite matched up to what you were looking for? You can actually go ahead and you can create custom event types. So I'm going to, I'm going to show you guys how to, how you can do that very, very quickly. So we're going to go, in the, in, while we're logged into our member area, in the top navigation bar, just like we did before, we're going to click on events. And then instead of clicking event planner this time, we're going to go ahead and click on event types. This should be the second option right next to event planner. And this will bring us to a new page where we can see manage event types. And we don't have any listed here currently, but this is where any custom event types will be listed. So from here, we can go ahead and click on create new type. And you can see a new, a new line appeared within this little listing here. I'm actually gonna zoom in so you can see a little bit bigger. Uh, from here, you can select the, 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 the type of event type. So this will be based on some of the existing options already. Uh, so this will be based, or this will take the color that is used to represent this event or this event type, and we'll use it for your custom event. So let's actually go to the home page very quickly. Where did it go? That's one, two, three. And we're going to go to our calendar. And we can see at the bottom we have our event types and all of their different colors. So we can, so currently we have a, um, we have all of these different options and we have all of these different colors available to use. So if we were to go over here, we can select one of these already existing event types and that will use the color associated with it already. So as we have fundraiser selected, uh, this will make our custom event type use this nice cyan blue color. Uh, if we were to select, uh, say, deadline, that will use the red color instead. So once, you, once you've selected the color or the event type that you would like to use as the base for your custom event type, all you have to do is go ahead and type in um, the name of your new event type. So in this case, let's go ahead and select custom event type just for the sake of the example, but you can put in just about whatever you would like here. And once you're happy with that, go ahead and click on the add action. And as you can see, it has now been added to our list and you can see that the red uh, event type color uh, has been selected for this custom event type. Now, if we were to go back to event planner and open up one of our events and then click on edit details once again, we'll be able to see our custom event type uh, option that's now listed here. And we'll be able to select that and it will appear on our club's calendar uh, with, the, with the color that we selected. So let's go ahead and save that. And that's the, what, what was the date here? July 30th. So we're gonna refresh the page. And as you can see, the, the, um, the calendar item has been updated to that red color since we did change that event type. Uh, 
So we have another uh, we have another question is how you can go about enabling credit card payments for events. Um, and this will just, just go by going through this process as well. This will also enable the online payment module. Um, or sorry, I should rephrase that. To enable credit card payments on your club's website, uh, you will need to enable the online payment module. And once this is done, it will allow you to accept payments through your club's website uh, via, uh, for things like club dues and the dues and billing module, uh, as well as any payments for your events created within Event Planner. And you will also get access to our second, uh, our more robust uh, event creation software, uh, which is my event run. That's all included within the online payment module. Uh, and I'm actually going to go over to our clubrunner.ca website. And we're going to go ahead and click on features. And from here, we can scroll down the page just a little bit. You can see a, uh, a whole host of all of the features available within clubrunner. And we're going to find online payment here. If we click on this page, uh, you'll be able to find all of the information regarding the online payment module and what you can do to uh, what you can do to get this set up. So, in the case uh, for clubs listed within uh, Canada or the U.S., you can feel free, or any of these other countries, uh, feel free to click on the the respective button here, and you'll be able to find specific information for your country. So, in this case, we're going to go ahead and we're going to just go click on the U.S. just for the sake of example. So. In this case, in order to enable the online payment module, you will need to register with one of Clubrunner's partner payment vendors. Uh, for clubs located within the United States, that will be with Paya, um, with Paya or formerly Sage Payment Solutions. Uh, you'll be able to come to this page and you'll be able to review all of the information about Paya, um, any pricing that will come on their end. So there is some pricing in regards to enabling the online payment module, uh, but this is, this is all on the payment vendor side. There's no additional fees with Clubrunner. And you'll also be able to download some more information about the module, uh, as well as any application forms if they are necessary. Uh, once your account has been set up, uh, it, this will, it'll all be connected with Club Runner and you'll be in, our team will be able to enable access to my event or my event runner um, and any of the other online payment features as well for your club. And then our final question since we do have we are running out we, or we are running out of time and the webinar uh, will be ending shortly. Um, is there a limit to the number of guests and or volunteers within my event or sorry within event planner? Uh, or the volunteer signup list. So currently uh, in Event Planner, there is no limit to how many people can register. Uh, though if the club does choose to limit it to club members, it'll, um, it'll, it'll be restricted to club members only. Though if there is, club, if the club does, does decide to make it a public event, uh, just about anyone will be able to come in and register. Uh, for the, the amount of volunteers, uh, there is a little, little bit of a limit involved in that case. And I'm going to go ahead and I can show you these details as well. We're going to go ahead and click on features once again. And this time we're going to go, we're going to, go to the volunteers option. And if we scroll down the page, you can see a quick little uh, information about uh, basic volunteer module versus the enhanced version of the volunteer module. And if you want, you can go ahead and request a seven day free trial by clicking on the link here. Uh, and this will let you fill in some information uh, to get that shot set up for your account. And if we scroll down this list of uh, list of features, you can see the differences between uh, the basic version and the enhanced version. Uh, but if you want to take a look at the limits, the base version has a maximum number of active signup lists of five. Well, uh, uh, well, it is limited to the amount of groups that you can create as well. So you can, with the basic version, uh, you, that, will be, that will be limited to 10 groups with 10 tasks in the group. And then there with in per tasks, that is with a maximum of 10 people in a singular task. Uh, so, this is, so there are some uh, restrictions. Uh, this will eventually, with all of this calculated, uh, the maximum number of volunteers you can have is 250, as you can see here. And if the club does decide to upgrade to the enhanced version of the volunteer module, uh, these limits will be upgraded to 25 uh, each, with a maximum number of volunteers of being 2,500. Uh, if there's any, if, if the club does decide to, to enable the enhanced version, 
and you do need to have a, a higher number than that, feel free to reach out to us. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll be able to discuss with our team to see what can be done for the club. So we, we, that, that will be it for the Q&A session today. Again, if you guys have any other questions that we weren't able to get to, feel free to go to our clubrunnersupport.com website. And you'll be able to either use any of the hundreds of articles that we have listed here to, uh, to find the answer for your question. Or if you're not able to find anything, feel free to click on the contact us button, uh, submit us a ticket, and we'll be glad to answer, uh, answer your email. So thank you everyone for joining us today. I hope all of this information was extremely helpful for you. Uh, there was a lot of great questions and a lot of, a lot of information that was shared. Uh, so, and thank you guys for joining once again. Uh, take care, everyone.